Canada is promising to meet our NATO targets of spending the equivalent of 2% of our GDP on defense. And the good news is that is spending that has wider economic benefits. Iggy Damogalski is president and CEO of Wayjax. Thanks for being with us. Thanks so much for having me here, Amanda. So when you hear that defense spending will rise, what's your reaction in terms of the benefit that might have? Well, I, th I think it's great news for our country. Uh, when I think of a company like Wayjax, we're one of Canada's uh, longest standing industrial companies, been around since uh, 1858. And so the type of work that, that we would do would be working on uh, engines and generators for uh, the Coast Guard, for their patrol vessels, frigates, icebreakers, or search and rescue boats, and also uh, the engines on tanks and light armored vehicles. And, uh, and for, for companies like ours, and there's many like us that, that participate in these large projects, these are multi-decade projects. And so they build some really, really great skill sets within the country and, uh, and, and create a lot of jobs. Of course, when we think about defense manufacturing, uh, we do know that a lot of the really big players are in the U.S. Can you play a role in the supply chain if the ultimate big contract has to go south? Or should we try to keep more of the whole thing here to the extent that we can? Well, I think there's... Uh there's incentives to keep it in the country and uh, and the companies that ultimately do get these contracts they have to meet certain requirements uh, they're called ITB credits and so so industry and Canada ultimately does benefit from these projects and those Canadian companies do have to add a lot of value in Canada and as you say it's often a multi-year contract a fairly big one the service contracts that go with these can also be pretty lucrative I imagine Absolutely, that is that is a, the the real win here. Um, so some of the the products that are coming up, you know, these are it takes fifteen to twenty years to build, you know, a series of ships or a series of of really any kind of big military equipment, and then the, the service contracts and the parts contracts will last for multi decades after that. So in some cases, you're talking forty or even fifty years of work for local Canadian companies uh, for the full life cycle of these projects. Does, has it been your experience or your impression that the industry, those of you like Wayjax who are ready to play a part in all of this, have any input in how the spending might happen? Or do you find out once some decision is made inside the Department of Defense? Uh, we are involved a little bit. Uh, I think uh, our Canadian government and the military uh, do listen to industry and industry often knows how to do things in an efficient way so they for sure take uh the input but ultimately those decisions do rest uh within within the military and uh and they i think they do a great job in building these projects and when we think about that number two percent of gdp it's a it's a much bigger place than we've been in recent history uh is does it represent a sizable impact do you think if that does get spent and a, a chunk of it is spent on real products like ships, for instance, or engines, parts. Uh, what's the economic benefit? I think the, the economic benefit for Canada is huge. I mean, right now we're spending approximately 1.3%. So going to 2%, that's a 50% increase. Uh, so that's a, that's, that's a really, really big deal. And especially on some of these new large capital projects, uh, when we think about the recent um, submarine contract that, that's been talked about, I mean, Canada has four submarines and they were bought used from the UK uh, in the early 2000s. And now we're thinking of adding 12 more. So we're quadrupling the size of that fleet. So that's 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 big, serious dollars and big, serious contracts for a lot of Canadian companies. It's so good to have you, Iggy. Really appreciate your time today. Thank you so much for having me, Amanda. Iggy Demogalski is president and CEO of Wayjax. Time for the takeaway and unintended consequences. It's no secret that housing in Canada is unaffordable. Home prices are still at or near record levels in some urban centers, and rents in most urban centers are at all time highs. So perhaps it's not surprising that some Canadians don't want to live in those urban centers. A recent survey revealed that nearly 40% of new Canadians, defined here as for under 10 years or less, are thinking about moving because of unaffordable housing. That may sound like a terrible thing, and there's no question everyone should be able to afford a decent place to live, but it may also not be a tragic situation. The vast majority of new Canadians land in three cities in Canada, Toronto, Vancouver, and Montreal. And those places have the worst housing shortages and therefore the highest house costs. Leaving them in search of better housing isn't a disaster scenario. It leads to places like Winnipeg or Halifax or Calgary, slightly smaller places with slightly lower density and therefore more affordable housing, but plenty of other things to recommend them. 
In fact, encouraging new Canadians to move beyond those few locations doesn't just solve a capacity problem there, they would bring vibrancy and stimulation to other cities in this vast country. Of course, if immigrants do migrate elsewhere, some planning around services should follow so that schools, hospitals, and other services keep up with new demand. But let's agree, that's a good problem to have, especially in smaller places with declining populations. Maybe Canada could take the problem a step further and actively encourage relocation with incentives and quality homes in different regions of the country. My takeaway? People move for all kinds of reasons, but if finding a better quality of life is one of them, there's plenty of it to be had across this great land of ours. That's Taking Stock for this week. I'm Amanda Lang. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.